Good evening, guys. What's going on? Uh, sorry, I hadn't dropped anything in about a week. Uh, just been crazy, man. Got a lot going on with work and uh, my wife's aunt's in the hospital. So just, man, been hectic. Uh, some big fights coming up. Um, obviously, tomorrow night, Terrell Gasha. I, always, I may have pronounced, mispronounced his name, but Terrell Gasha is fighting Erickson Lubin. Um, and, you know, I think this is a fight that's been overlooked a little bit because September the 26th, we've got some really big fights. We've got the Charlo Rosario fight. We've got the uh, Derevinchenko Charlo fight, both title fights, Showtime pay per view fights. So, really good fights coming up. This weekend, though, this, look, guys, this is a crossroads fight. This is a fight, seriously, you need to get up for. It. You, you definitely need to, you know, tune in and, and give this fight a, a watch. And I'm going to tell you why. These are two guys that have extremely, extremely good uh, amateur pedigrees, and they're at what you would consider borderline elite level. They just haven't crossed over that plateau, or I guess the hilltop, to make it to the pearly gates of champion status. Um, you know, they've both been there. They just came up a little short. And I think what's really cool about this fight is. Well, you know, before I get into that, let's just go over some stats. I'm just going to go guy for guy, nothing nothing too basic. Uh, I'm sorry, complicated, just basic stuff. Uh, Terrell, let's see, he's got a 72-inch reach. He fights, obviously, at 154 pounds. Um, he's 33 years old, so he's about nine years older than Erickson. Uh, he's 23-1-1, one one, okay? He's got 10 knockouts. Now, we'll get into his prototype and style here in a minute. Um, the draw that he has was to Austin Trout. The loss that he has was to uh, Ayers Landy Lara in a fight, which he was dropped, I believe, in the 12th round, and it ended up um, going unanimous decision for Lara's way. So Erickson Lubin, 74-and-a-half-inch uh, reach. He's got about two-and-a-half inches advantage on Terrell. However, like I said, he's nine years younger. Um, his KO ratio is 16 KOs out of 23 wins, one loss. So he's had 24 total fights, and we know that loss was a 40-second knockout to Jamel Charlo. Okay, um, So they roughly have the exact same amount, uh, minus one fight going in favor of Terrell, uh, of professional fights. And Lubin obviously has a bit higher KO ratio. Um, but let's get into style, and then I'll cover why I'm telling you this is a crossroads fight. Style-wise... Now, to be honest with you, I I don't want to tell you, okay, Erickson's fought a guy similar to Terrell before. Um, I don't think that other than Laura, I mean, Laura, look, he's as good as, as good gets, obviously. He's fought some of the greats, you know, he's fought, uh, he's fought, uh, Jaren, uh, not Jaren Hurd, but, uh. I'm sorry, guys. I'm drawing a blank here. Either way, he's fought Canelo Alvarez. He's fought uh, Jaron Hurd. Yeah. Um, he's had some really good fights, you know, and he's obviously getting a little bit older. But, you know, when you talk about a guy like Lubin, he's a master. He's just a crafty master boxer. Um, and here's what's, here's what's cool about the fight. When Lubin was tested, truly tested, against a guy I would consider – similar to Jermel Charlo. Um, and the reason I say that is because Terrell throws a lot of punches. A lot of punches. He's not known to be a great inside fighter, but he is a huge mix-it-up fighter. He will fight fire with fire. He loves a good old-fashioned exchange. And what's really cool about him is he has moderate power. He's not an explosive, and when I say explosive, as far as just knockout one-punch power, but he is punches and bunches, high volume, and man, he's exciting to watch. He loves to rip one-twos. He loves to follow up five and six shot combinations. And he just bites down on that on that gum shield and lets him fly. Super heavy-handed as far as, not heavy-handed, but fast-handed fighter. And just an exciting guy to watch. I think that's what Erickson bit off when he took a fight with Jamel Charlo. In my opinion... A, that knockout uppercut was a bit of a fluke, not in the sense of Jermel didn't deserve or couldn't pull it off again, but it was just a perfectly landed punch so early in the fight. Neither guy had really even warmed up. And I think this is a real true test for Erickson because 
since that step-up fight, Erickson has fought nobody near that caliber. This, I would consider Terrell a B-plus fighter. So, you know, um, this is a true test for Erickson. In, in, in reference to Terrell, I give Erickson the edge in power. He sits down on his punches a lot more. He's left-handed. He's a lot more patient. He does not throw near as high a volume of punches, but his punches are way more calculated. They have more thump behind them. And what, most importantly, they're very methodical. I mean, guys, he's literally a move ahead of pretty much everybody. You can tell he's got that Errol Spence style. He's very, very, very – he's a thinking fighter. He's very smart. He's very patient, and he doesn't push the pace of the fight. He's going to take what you give him and build off of that. And he is what I would consider a slow starter. The reason this is a crossroads for each guy. Now, obviously, Erickson Lubin is young enough. He could lose this fight and still have a decent push at a career. But I don't want to say there's so much hype behind him. But truthfully, guys, there there is a good bit of hype behind him because, you know, Look, the point I'm getting at is, at 24 years old, you've reached your peak. You can maintain your peak and maybe build a little bit on it. As far as his God-given ability and his training and what he's going to learn in a training camp, there's really not much more he can learn from. At this point in his career, he can only learn from elite fights. And this is a fight that's going to prepare him for championship status. So it's very important he win this fight. It's important for Gaucho to win this fight because he's 33 years old. This is his last shot at a title. And, you know, I mean, he, he could be one of those guys that fools you and moves on into his late 30s, early 40s, and is still, you know, an elite fighter. But I doubt it, guys. He's he's way too high action of a fighter. He does take some punches. Uh, he's not a punching bag by any stretch of the imagination. And he has really good head movement. But, like I said, he likes to bite down and fight fire with fire in exchange. And he's a mid to outside range fighter. But he throws a lot of punches. And he will get inside. He just doesn't really have the power to sustain real inside damage. Unless it were like a three-quarter uppercut, a solid uppercut, or an interior hook. You're not going to see him just destroy people to the body. I mean, he's got 10 KOs, so less than a 50% knockout ratio. You know, so he is an outside to mid-range fighter. He likes to light you up from deep. Um, I guess it's safe to say he plays for the points, but he has stopped people. And he it's going to take a lot to stop Erickson. But anyway, I've rambled a lot. Great fight, guys. It's coming up on Showtime tomorrow night. Check out the fight. My prediction for the fight, honestly, I'm calling Erickson Lubin to stop him. Uh, mid to late rounds. I'm going to say between 8 and 12 he stops him. Uh, that's my prediction for the fight, but I'm really excited for this fight because this is one of those fights, even though he, you know, gosh, is the underdog in this fight, he could pull it off. He's going to, I just think he likes to, if he boxes really smart and kind of tones down his activity, he could pull this fight off. But he just gets so, he gets really excited when he starts letting him fly. And for him to tie into a firefight with Erickson Lubin, Although Erickson's going to throw less punches, man. He's, like I said, he uses his hips and he sits down on that left body shot and he can crack. So I got Erickson stopping him. Either way, hope you guys enjoy the fight. Um, put in the comments who you think is going to win. Let me know what you think. All right, good talking to everybody. Have a good night. One.